Hey everybody, Pastor Sean here. I just want to take a, a few moments. I want to first apologize to all of our uh, our online church family. Uh, either every week, maybe watch us on Facebook Live or on YouTube. Uh, and I apologize. This past Sunday, we experienced some te technical difficulties with the, with our sound. And I'm hoping that I actually had that fixed for this week and that we're able to work through that problem. But I did not want you all to miss out on what we talked about this past Sunday. We started a new series simply called a winning the war in your mind and we're going to get into week two this coming sunday and so uh, for your benefit I, I want to spend a few moments and talk to you about week one which was winning the war in your mind so if you have some some time to spend with me i would love to go over what we went over uh, this past sunday so let us start this time together uh, with a word of prayer beginning this time of, of learning experiencing god's word together God, we thank you for this time uh, that we are able to take. And I know it's not a Sunday morning, but I appreciate everyone tuning in right now and, and to, to listen to, to what we had to share this past Sunday. God, let it be, be a blessing to us. God, let it be an encouragement to us. But God, also allow this to be a challenge for us to think about our thinking, to think about the, the war that we wage every single day in our minds. God, let this time be a time of blessing and encouragement to us. In your name, amen. So yes, we are talking about winning the war in your mind. Each one of us uh, have a constant battle that is happening within our own thoughts. And it's a constant battle between faith and fear. For example, the world around us with all everything that's happening, where we're constantly maybe fearful, scared about uh, what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen in my job, what's going to happen uh, with my kids, what's going to happen with our schools, what's going to happen in our country and in our world. And every single day, we have this internal battle in our minds. And we, we want to, to lean towards the side of faith, but at the same time, we're constantly being attacked with these fears. So I don't know if you're like me, but every day I endure these battles. Every day I think about, and I, I want to, to be in control. I want to have confidence in the calling that God has for me. But sometimes we face crippling, crippling insecurity, crippling um, paralysis, where we just don't know what to do. And we want to talk about our mind. Your mind is a battlefield. Whether you realize it or not, every single day your mind is a battlefield. And see, most of life's battles are won or lost in our mind. I've been going through a personal devotion um, from Pastor Greg Rochelle from Life Church, and, and the, the devotional on you version is, is called Winning the War in Your Mind. And when I started that devotional, it was a seven day devotional, when I started that, I was immediately drawn towards this content, immediately drawn towards uh, what he had to say, and it really made a deep impact in my life. So much so that I decided that we need to do this as a church. We need to actually do this as a series. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be going over the series. We're going to be using the example of the Apostle Paul. And Paul had many, many examples of what it was to have this internal struggle within his own mind. And so we're gonna reflect on some of that today. Um, and as well as going into the next few weeks. So I want to start by reading 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, reading it together. And so I'll give you a few moments. Maybe you get your Bible app open if you have a Bible handy grabbing that. If not, if you don't have a Bible handy, uh, that's fine. Um, and just, just listen as I read this together. But 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4 says this, For though we live in the world... We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. There's two things that I want you to, to focus out of that. First of all, when it says we do not wage war, that word for war in the, in the original Greek was this word dunamis. And this word dunamis actually meant an explosive power of God. And that second word, when we talk about demolishing strongholds, that word uh, stronghold, that we get that from the Greek word uh, orchirama, which means a military stronghold. And a military stronghold in the original context of that word, it meant it was basically a fortress 
maybe built inside the, the, the highest peak of a city. It was sometimes reinforced with walls that were sometimes 20 feet thick. I mean, we're talking about an impenetrable stronghold. And usually in the, in the midst of a battle, that's where you would stick maybe your commanders, or in some cases you would even stick your, your captors, right? The people that are captives, I should say. People that you've captured, people that you're trying to, to keep away from those that are invading. And so when we think about, uh, on the contrary, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, it says they have divine power to demolish strongholds. What does our spiritual enemy seek to do in my life, seek to do in your life? Our spiritual en enemy is this devil, is Satan himself, right? And he roars about, the, lion, the, the Bible talks about, he roars about like a lion seeking whom he may devour. See, the, the devil wants to attack your mind and create strongholds of deception. He wants to create strongholds in your thinking, in your mind, in your thoughts to discourage you and to distract you and to keep you from doing what God wants you to do. He wants to shape your thinking. He wants to change your thinking one thought at a time until you become a prisoner of that deception. Satan says things to us like, you can't, you, you can't trust people, or, or you know what, you'll never succeed in life, or you'll, or you'll always be broke. Hey, you're never, you're never good enough to, to find someone to marry, or God doesn't really hear your prayers. Do you think God really is paying attention to you? The devil tells a lot of these lies, and when we see them as lies, and if you're a believer, you understand those things are lies, but the problem with lies and the problem with the war in our mind is the more that we hear a lie, and the more often we hear that lie, soon that lie becomes a stronghold of deception in our lives, and we start to believe that lie. We start to believe that lie. Again, it's in chapter 10, verse 5, 2 Corinthians, it says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the, God, the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make you obedient to Christ. And that's what I wanna talk about with you very briefly, briefly this afternoon, whenever you're watching this. I wanna talk about what it is to take captive of every thought and make it obedient to Christ. I, I happen to love uh, cognitive behavioral science. I, I love the, 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 the science behind uh, our minds and, and cognitive processing and, and why our brains think that the way that they do. And I want to point something out. The Bible, the Bible and science match up in this. The Bible and both the Old and the New Test Testament talk a lot about cognitive processing. It talks a lot about the way that our brain works. And for example, going back to the Old Testament, Proverbs 23, 7 says this, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So as mankind, as we think in our hearts, so it so becomes in our lives. Think about the, the uh, going back to strongholds for a second. If I was to go out to the, the backyard of the church, and the church we have a backyard and it leads, there's this pathway that leads back to some more yard that we have, some more acreage we have in the back of the property. And if I was to walk the exact same path from, from the steps of the back door of the church, right, or the front door of the church, all the way back through this, through this path in, in, in our, at our church property, if I was to walk that path, the exact same path every day for a hundred days, I would create an actual pathway. See, some of that pathway maybe is not mowed right now. There's some 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 grass has grown up, some some weeds have grown up. But by just by walking that pathway, I will create a pathway. And so that's the same thing that happens in our minds. We allow certain thoughts and certain lies of deception to come into our lives, and we allow it to 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 be there. And, and by very nature, we start to think in those pathways. It's a negative pathway. It's a neurological pathway that we allow to develop into our mind. And so our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Another way of saying this, what we think can determine who we become. So if we think things like, I can't accomplish this, I can't do this, I can't do that, then we probably won't accomplish those things. But adversely also, if, if we think we can do something and we have faith that God will, will see us, give us victory in certain areas of our life, then we probably will. 
Because again, Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you dwell on problems and you dwell on your circumstances, those things will begin to overwhelm you. But if you look for solutions to those same problems, you're going to find those solutions. Uh, if you feel like a, a victim in a circumstance, you feel like a victim in certain aspects of your life, then you probably will become a victim. But if you believe that you are, will overcome all things through Christ, then I'm going to tell you something, you will overcome those things. In so many cases, the life you have is reflection of the thoughts that you think. I'm going to ask you a, a very uh, serious question. So, so since your life is always moving in the direction towards your strongest thoughts, are you happy about the direction your life is taking? Let me say it maybe a different way. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. So are you excited about the direction your thoughts are taking you? Think about that for a moment. Think about the, the what you think about how you perceive things. There's a, a scale I had people do uh, this past Sunday, thinking about or rating themselves from scale to one to 10. And I'll do that really quickly with you, all right? For example, um, think about, uh, think about your, your thoughts during the course of the day. Are you mostly worried or are you at, or are you at peace? So on a scale from one to 10, one would say, I'm, I'm constantly, I'm worried about everything, every situation. And a 10 is that I'm at peace at every situation. And you scale the one to 10, where would you rate yourself? Here's another scale I want you to think about. We just talked about negative thoughts and positive thoughts. Where do you find yourself? Where's your thinking most of the time? Are you one, always thinking negative, always thinking about the worst in the situation? Or are you a 10, where you're constantly at peace and you have positive thoughts and you have trust that God's gonna take care of everything? We would all like to say we're 10 tens, right? But sometimes, in my own life, I've been ones and twos, right? I haven't, uh, I've had some negative thoughts and some negative thinking. The last scale, the one through 10 scale I want you to think about is this. Uh, where are your thoughts in regards to, to worldly thinking or eternal thinking, all right? So in worldly thinking, your mind is consumed with the things of this life. You're, you're worried about material possession. You're worried about people liking you, right? Whereas if you're more of a 10, you have more in, internal uh, difference. You, you, you trust uh, that, that uh, God has given you gifts. You trust in, 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 in your eternal home and security in heaven. So again, I ask you that question though, are you excited about the direction that your thoughts are taking you? I, I asked myself that very same question. It came up in this Bible study I was doing. And I have to be honest with you, I wasn't totally excited about the way that my thoughts, my, my daily thoughts were taking me. And I was conflicted because I know what God wants me to do. I know how God wants me to lead my family, lead, lead my church, right? But I was, to be honest, I was really taken back by the amount of negative thoughts that I would allow myself to, to wake up with and allow myself to, to dwell upon during the day. And that was having a negative reaction, right? So as your heart thinks, so does your mind do, all right? So I was having some things in my life that I wasn't very happy with, and it started with my thinking. So are you excited about the direction that your life is taking you? So to, to really quickly, to, I'm gonna give you two things today, two really quick things that I want us to think about uh, and I, I want us to, to consider in our lives. And the first one is this, I want you to identify the biggest stronghold that's holding you back. Remember stronghold, it's that internal fortress, it's fortified, it's hard to penetrate. What is that, that, that biggest stronghold, that biggest prison that's holding you back in your life? Maybe you're thinking things like, I'm not good enough. Uh, my past is so bad, I'll never be able to move past that. You know, so, so maybe if that, that goes into your relationships. I'll never be able to have a, a, a positive relationship again. I'll never, never be able to trust people or people will never trust me because of my past. You know, maybe that, that battle has been a physical thing with yourself. Maybe you're, you're have some depression based upon your, your, your weight or, or your physical health in some manner. Oh, I'll never be able to, to look like this other person. I'll never be able to, to run a marathon or do something like that. I'm just not capable of doing it. Maybe your biggest stronghold is that you feel that you can never develop that relationship with God that you know you should develop. 
because you're, you, you don't know enough about the Bible or you don't think you're faithful enough to God's word. What is your biggest stronghold? And we're going to think about this because of this very important reason. We need to identify the barriers, the strongholds that you have in your life in order to start working and, and to start overcoming those barriers. I, identify the biggest stronghold holding you back. And once you identify what that biggest stronghold is, what is that thing that that thinking that's holding you back from doing other things, once you identify it, then you're able to work on a new path. So we talked about the old pathway, right? Something that, that you know is built on a lie, but you naturally, you, you naturally follow that, naturally think about those things. So for example, um, perhaps, right? Perhaps you get to home from work and, and you've had a very busy day at work, and as soon as you get home, the, the kids are running around crazier, they're being super loud, maybe your spouse is trying to tell you of all the problems that he or she has had that day, and the first thing that you wanna do is just wanna experience peace and quiet. So when people are being loud and the kids are running and everybody's asking you questions, your first reaction is just, just to yell at people. Hey, everybody, leave me alone, everybody be quiet. Maybe that's you. So maybe that's your old pathway. That's, that's the way your brain has been trained to think. I'm just gonna react and, and yell at people or get angry. A new pathway would be this. When you walk in and all that chaos is going on, your new pathway is this. I'm not gonna say a word. I'm gonna to count to 10, or maybe for some of you it's 110, right? I'm gonna to count to 10, I'm gonna take a deep breath. And I'm gonna do the opposite of what my brain is telling me to do. My brain is telling me to be angry and react in anger. I'm going to instead pause, maybe hug my spouse, say hi to my kids, and not get angry. And I know it sounds simple, but how many of you knew what you should do in a situation, you knew you should react in a certain situation, but you found yourself, your brain, doing something completely different? Maybe you've had an argument with a significant other, all right? You've had an argument and you know that you need to go back, you know you need to apologize, you know you need to work it out, you know you need to make things right, but when you start that conversation, you know you want to say this, you know you want to make it right, but you automatically go right back into the argument that you had. How many have done that? I've done that. So many times I've done that. I need to go back to, to, to my wife, I need to, to try and make things right. And I start a conversation and I go right back to that negative pathway, the neurological pathway where I just want to start arguing over the same silly things again. See, we all do it. But a new pathway, when you identify what is that stronghold, what is that thinking that is, that is creating a stronghold in your life, when you really identify that, then, then you can actually start to change that thinking, to develop a new pathway. But you're not gonna be able to develop new pathways until you start understanding where your, where your negative pathways are, where your biggest barriers are, what's that stronghold in your life. The uh, book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says this, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may be able to prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So you need to identify the biggest stronghold that's holding you back. And you, again, you cannot defeat what you cannot define. So after you identify what the biggest stronghold is, then you need to name the truth. Number two, name the truth that demolishes that stronghold. Name the truth that demolishes that stronghold. John chapter eight, verse 32 says this, and you will know the truth. And if you know this, say this with me, and the truth will set you free. One more time. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So name the truth that demolishes that stronghold in your life. See, a, a lie and, and allowing your, your mind to think and, and be negative and think about these, these lies and deceptions, it starts to create a spiritual bondage in your own life. You know what you should do. Paul writes about this. He says, I know what I should do. Um, I believe he says that. Let me find it for you. Um, Uh, he talks about, um, he says, I know what I, know what I should do. Uh, I, my brain, I, I know what my thoughts should be, but I don't do the things I should do. But instead, I do the things I shouldn't do. And I know that, I recognize that, and my mind is just is frustrated by that. See, Paul talks about that, but that's what we can learn from Paul. So you and I do the same thing. 
we know the things that we should do, we know the things we should say, but we find ourselves still going back to those ne negative pathways, we need to identify what that is, and then we name the truth that demolishes that stronghold. We need to believe that the truth of God's word and, and creating new ways of thinking will set us free from that bondage. We uh, recently moved from our home that we've had for many, many years. And in that home uh, that we just moved from, I had an office in, in the back of that house. Uh, the office was actually an addition to the house. So uh, it used to be that the door to my office used to be the back door of the house. And so when they renovated it, they actually never changed that door. It was, a, it was an actual back door. It wasn't like an interior door. And I, I tell you all that to say this, that door actually locked from the, uh, from the outside. Meaning if I was in my office, and someone could lock me out, so I couldn't get back into the rest of the house. Um, and so every once in a while, the kids, when they'd be playing or goofing around, I'd be back in the office doing stuff, and they would lock my door. And they would lock my door, and then and when I tried to leave, I'd have to pound on the door until someone came and unlocked and, and let me out. Well, one day, uh, I was in the back doing some studying, and, and Heather called back and said, hey, I'm, I'm gonna take the kids out, we're gonna run some errands. And I said, sure, no problem. Um, and I and they left and I forgot that previous to them leaving I had tried to, to unlock the door and it was I tried to leave and it was locked and so when I like five minutes after she left I realized oh my goodness I am locked in this room and there I don't know how long she's gonna be gone for and so because I live in a townhouse I couldn't just go out to the backyard and walk around the back of the house I'd have to walk around the whole neighborhood and I had no shoes on and, and, and it was middle of winter. I said, I don't know how I'm going how I'm to get out of this room. And I waited and waited and waited until she finally came home a couple hours later. And at that point, I started pounding on the door. I said, Heather, you have to unlock me. I've been locked in here. She came to the door and opened it right up. And unbeknownst to me, she had actually unlocked the door before she left. And the whole entire time, I thought I was trapped in, in this back room. But the whole entire time, that door had been unlocked. And it was actually quite funny in the moment, realizing that I had been locked behind an unlocked door. Let me ask you a question this morning, or this afternoon at this point, when I'm, as I'm recording this. Some of you right now do not know what God has, do not know what God wants you to have. And you're not living the life God wants you to live because you're living behind an unlocked door. You're living behind deception, behind lies. You're thinking, I can't do this, I can't do that. that. That door's locked for me. But you've never tried the door. The truth of God's word sets us free. And we know that and we should know that and we should believe that and we should live our lives like that. But we listen to the lies in our heads. We listen to the devil telling us, we can't do this. You can't do that. He's given you lies and you're living your life behind an unlocked door. So identify what that lie is. Identify what that stronghold is you have in your life. And then understand that the truth, name the truth that demolishes that stronghold. The truth is God has set us free from all that. There's no reason that we need to live in captivity any longer. The Word of God sets us free. So again, I ask you, what is your stronghold? What is something that's holding you back? What is that battle in your mind? Identify what that is. And then understand the truth of God's Word sets you free. So that was just, an, just a really rough summary of what we talked about this past Sunday. And I, and I pray that it's causing you to think a little bit and, and really get you thinking about what we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks. So let's pray as we end this afternoon. Again, God, thank you for this really brief time of opportunity we had. I pray that people will now start thinking about what is that stronghold in their lives. And they'll work towards, toward identifying what it is defining that stronghold, God, but then naming the truth. And the truth is, God, that you have set us free. And as believers, God, we don't have to live behind lies anymore in our lives. So God, encourage us, God, and challenge that, us with that truth today. In your name, amen. All right, thank you so much. I hope to see you uh, back either live or, or watching on our, our live stream on Facebook and or YouTube on Sunday morning. Until then, love, grow, and serve.